this is Al Williams of Sunset Hill Solutions. Um, in this video, we're going to look at a feature that is um, brand new to Business Objects 4.1 Service Pack 6, but it's not brand new to Business Objects. In fact, it used to be a feature of Desktop Intelligence. Well, I'm going to very, show you very quickly what I'm talking about. I'm logged into VI Launchpad with Web Intelligence opened. I'm going to create a new document, and as you can see, one of the options down here is Freehand SQL. Now this is a very nice new feature. It was available in Service Pack 5, but you had to use existing, I think, existing desktop intelligence reports. Anyways, it wasn't as um, usable as it is now because you can have freehand SQL and you can also have, you can execute store procedures through here as well. So this uh, video tutorial will walk you through how to do that. Before we add the uh, this SQL to a web intelligence report. I just want to explain to you what I'm using here. So I'm using the AdventureWorks DW database. It's available from Microsoft. It has fact and dimension tables. And this particular example, I'm just writing a query to bring in the product name, category name, subcategory name, the quantity sold, and the sales amount. So again, I can run this query just to make sure it does execute. And so this is what I thought, this was my first try at using um, Freehand SQL of Intelligence. I'm going to copy this SQL. Okay, back in Web Intelligence, I'm going to create a new report based on Freehand SQL. So the first thing you have to do is select one of the connections you've got set up. So I'm going to select the AdventureWorks DW connection that points to that database we were just looking at. So this is where I enter the uh, query script. I'm just going to paste it. And there's a validate button here to validate that the SQL is, in fact, has the correct syntax. Okay, it says no errors. I'm going to click OK. And let this run. So what happens is it comes up with a query panel at this point now, and it shows the objects um, that were in the query. And in this case, it has uh, correctly identified the order quantity and sales amount as measures. Occasionally, you have to go in, uh, depending on the SQL you have and the database you're using, it might not recognize whether or not it's a um, measure or a dimension, and you can go change it up here. And you can also change the data type as well. In this case, we don't have to do that, so I'm going to run the query. Okay, so the query did run. Well, let's just have a look and have I make these columns wider. We're going to see that we have multi-values. Now, to me, this didn't make sense at first. Um, let me explain what's going on here. Okay, I'll try and explain this the best I can. So, let's say, for instance, that these were objects that were in the universe, and these are this could be quite a common scenario. So you would drag these into your report and it would work. These are measures, these are dimensions, and you wouldn't get a multi-value. Uh, what I had to do to make this query work is if I go back to SQL Server, so here's the original query now. I'm not doing any, um, I haven't added the sum function to, to the measures here. And in order to get this to work, what I had to do in the SQL was have the sum function for the two measures and group by the three dimensions in order for this to work. So let me copy this SQL. We'll go back into Web Intelligence. We'll go into the Data Access tab and we'll edit the data provider. I'm going to edit the SQL down here. Get rid of what we had. Validate this. Contains no errors. I'm going to say OK. So it's going to come up with the query panel again, and we look we look good now. Now I'm going to run the query with the different SQL, and we'll see what happens here. So as you can see now, they, I am actually getting results in here um, based on the SQL that I've been using, where I added the sum function to the measures. Uh, in the query that I ran against the database. Now now that I have these here, this should operate like a normal table in business objects. So if I take away the 
English product name out of the table, it should automatically resum these measures. And it has done that. So, so that's what we wanted to do. So a very, very nice feature in Web Intelligence. If you've upgraded to Business Objects 4.1 Service Pack 6, and for me at least, the great um, thing about this new functionality is the fact that you don't always have to create a universe uh, for every report that you want to write. So in the past, you could create a universe that contained derived state derived tables with custom SQL that you could use in a report, but you still had to create the universe, publish it, and then select the universe you wanted to use when you created a report. And this probably isn't functionality you'd give to your average everyday users, but your power users and for one of type reporting where you have certain databases that it just doesn't make sense to build a whole universe around, you can easily generate reporting with web intelligence now. And uh, really, really nice new feature. The other thing you can do, and we're going to go over this right away, is execute store procedures. Uh, there are a few um, things you have to keep in mind when you do that, and we'll go over those when I uh, when we start talking about that in a minute. We're back in SQL Server Management Studio now. So I've created a store procedure, get sales without prompt. So this is a store procedure that doesn't have any parameters, and it's the same SQL statement that we used before. And we'll just make sure that this does return results. Okay, so it's the same results we were getting before. Uh, now we'll go into Web Intelligence to try and run this, um, not as freehand SQL statement, but as execute store procedure. Okay, we'll save the report that we have been working on and create a new one. So I've just created a folder in my uh, folder structure called Freehand SQL. I just got this report called Freehand SQL Working Example. And now I'll go in and to create a new Web Intelligence report to try out the stored procedures. And again, the option that we're going to select is Freehand SQL. So I'll select Freehand SQL down here. In this case, we won't be running a select statement. We want to just execute that stored procedure that we looked at a minute ago. So I'll select the right connection. I'll paste the statement in here. So it's just exec and the name of the store procedure. I'm not putting the uh, object qualifier owner on here for this example. Make sure that looks okay. It does, I'll click okay. So similar to when we ran the SQL statement, it's going to look at the um, field names that are brought back by the store procedure. And in this case, it's the same field names because we're doing the same thing. And I'll go ahead and run this query. Should bring back some results. Okay, so we're getting the same results as we were with um, the select statement we ran because that store procedure was exactly the same SQL inside of it. Now, there's very one very important thing you have to keep in mind when you want to execute store procedures or write reports that you give users the ability to execute or to refresh, and that is the account that you've created that's being used by the connection in your universe or sorry, that's being used by the connection in your repository that you're basing your report on, uh, you have to make sure that you give that account the ability to execute store procedures. And it's just like uh, anything that you do with SQL Server, if the user account doesn't have rights to execute, either to run a SQL statement on a table or to execute a store procedure, they will get an error. So in this case, I hadn't granted that user the, the rights to execute this store procedure. And once I did, um, this this issue was fixed, but it's a very important one you have to keep in mind. Okay, back in SQL Server Management Studio, creating a new store procedure called Get Sales with Prompt, uh, with the prefix of SSH. It's just um, set it apart from all the other store procedures that I have. At any rate, um, so that's the name of it. The only difference between this one and the one we looked at before is that there's a where statement for the product category name down here. And we have a parameter in this store procedure in which you supply the uh, product category name. So let's just create this store procedure. 
Now we'll go test it out. We'll just, I've already run it, but I'll run it one more time. So I'm just executing with the bikes category name. And we see we are getting results. So let's go back and try and run this in Web Intelligence with a parameter. Okay, the syntax is a little bit different for executing a store procedure with a prompt. So I still have the exec and name of the store procedure. And I have at prompt, the first argument or the first item here is the text I want to prompt with. So enter the product category name and the rest of the statement is shown right here. I validate this. Now I'm going to say OK. Now when I run the query, see what happens here. So now I'm prompted to enter a category name. Now I'm not sure that there's any way you can have this be a drop-down list. I don't think there is. But it's still, it does allow you to have parameters. So I'm just going to type in bikes. And OK. Run the query. Just make sure it's running. There we go. And the report did run, and we're only getting bikes as the category name. So you can execute store procedures with parameters and have a prompt in your web intelligence report. So I'm back in SQL Server Management Studio, and this is what I found to be one of the limitations for executing a store procedure. Now, it could be that it's not a limitation, and I'm not doing this right. Uh, however, this is what I've done. I've created another store procedure called Get Sales with Temp Table. So when this store procedure is a little bit different, I still have a parameter for the for the category, but I'm deleting information from a temp results table. I'm selecting rows into the temp results table. And then I'm finally doing a select star from temp results. And when I do that, uh, when I try and when I create the store procedure and try and execute this, well, I'll show you what happens in a minute. So now in the query script, I have the execute sales um, with temp table. So same so our procedure we just looked at that uses a temporary table and then a final select statement from that temp table. It does validate OK. However, if I click on OK down here to run, you'll see it doesn't return any objects in the result set. So it doesn't appear that it's possible to execute a store procedure that uses a temp table as part of the uh, processing. But having said that, I think it's a really nice new feature of Business Objects 4.1 Service Pack 6. And I hope you found this video uh, useful and that you can take advantage of this functionality in your future. Thanks a lot for your time.